Hello out there, and it is first look time today with a brand new Kershaw, and what is in front of you is the Epistle, number 2131. This is a 2019 Kershaw, the 2019 Kershaw that more than any other I've been looking forward to and expecting to be great, so uh, my expectations with this knife are very high, let me just be straightforward about that. And I have had some high expectations from Kershaw's this year and been disappointed in knives like the Innuendo. I've had some knives that, you know, from them... Didn't really expect too much, and then was sort of surprised at how good they were. So Kershaw's been up and down. This knife right here is really going to shape whether their 2019 line, at least for me, was a success. Because, again, uh, a lot of expectation on this knife. Mostly because when we look at it, the design. The look of this thing is just fantastic. And the word that I'm going to come back to over and over again in this overview is elegance. It is just a very elegant looking design. Very attractive at the $29.95, I think, budget price point. Um, just a very good looking blade overall. The lines are super nice. And yeah, it just does it for me aesthetically. And that carries a whole lot of weight. And I was hoping, I was really hoping that when I got this knife in hand, even if it wasn't perfect, that it would be a lot like the Viper Balone. And obviously these are very different knives, very different price points, but with the Balone, not a perfect blade, but for me, just the design and the look of it and, um, and the major things getting, uh, knocked out right, you know, that sort of carries the weight and, and pushes me past worrying about any of the deficiencies of the knife. And I was hoping that would be the case with this one as well. And the good news is it is. All of the major things that I look for are there, so there are no huge issues, and so the minor ones are a little bit easier for me to look past, but we're not going to look past them in this video. We'll definitely cover all those things as well and talk about the knife in detail. So let's just get into it, starting with the size comparisons and the specs. So when it comes to overall size, this knife is sort of in the smaller range, it sort of fits like the mini Griptilian Para 3 kind of range with a three inch plus a cutting edge. Overall, we're looking at right around seven inches of overall length. So bringing in the mini Griptilian, here we have it. So just a lot more broadness with the mini grip uh, up and down and then in width, you know, there's a nice uh, curvature to the scales here and it's a little more flat so even though this isn't the skinniest knife in the epistle you know it, it doesn't bulge out so it is pretty sleek and streamlined what else do we have here so comparing it to other kershaws here we have it versus the leak and down below we will put the dividend so you can get an idea of how it stacks up with those A little bit smaller without sacrificing too much blade length. Let's see, what else do we have here? Got to do the paramilitary too. It's a rule. <laughs> the PM2 sort of dwarfs it, but that is what it is. And CRKT squid. Just to bring in a smaller knife. Give you an idea of that. But the one knife from another company that I've really been thinking about this compared to is the CRKT Ripple. Because the Ripple has a similar kind of steel, similar kind of price point, aluminum scales, just like the Epistle. Overseas produced, you know, sort of a good competitive option. And there might be, hmm, how do I say this? So the Epistle might be a better looking knife for some people just with the classiness and again elegance we're going to keep coming back to that of the handle versus the ripple but i do believe the ripples are a little bit better built so you know there's a give and take there's a compromise sure but i think the the comparison there is a uh, a good one the big spec though the big big spec that we have to talk about is definitely going to be that 2.03 ounces. I mean, that is incredibly light. It's a very lightweight knife. It feels like nothing in hand. So even though this does look like a, uh, a gents piece, it certainly is going to back it up in terms of being able to be carried in maybe a jacket pocket, something lightweight like that. 2.68 on the ripple, just for comparison. 
you know, but 2.03, it literally feels like nothing. <laughs> you can barely tell that it's in your pocket. And the reason that we have such a uh, distinct uh, low weight is that there's only one liner on this knife. So the liner is for the liner lock. So this other side here with this aluminum scale is just the scale. So a little bit of an interesting uh, aspect of the construction of the knife. Getting into the, the specs and the steel, what we do have is ACR 13 MOV. That should come as no surprise because that's what Kershaw uses for their imports. For me, not a big deal with the steel. I'm not too worried about it. Um, I like ACR 13. I don't mind sharpening it. It does just fine for what I need an EDC knife to do. Now that said, the issue that might arise with this knife is that we have a bead blasted finish. Bead blasted finishes with ACR might not be the best thing, especially down here in Florida. It will tend to get a little uh, rusty and, and show corrosion. So I'm gonna have to be very careful with that. Obviously can't report too much about that yet because I haven't seen it happen. But um, in my experience, that can become an issue, so it's definitely something I will need to keep my eye on. Uh, we have a nice flat grind on this blade. It did not come particularly sharp out of box, so I had to touch it up. Took 30 seconds on the sharp maker, just a few passes, and it became pretty darn sharp. So no real issues there, just you know a finishing thing out of the factory. And we will talk more about fit and finish in just a bit. As we move on back... We have uh, a thumb stud. One thing I, I heard was that people saying that the thumb stud being located here might be an issue. It's just too far down the blade. Um, one, aesthetically, doesn't bother me. Two, when you're cutting and what I found just in like slicing paper and doing a little bit of cardboard is that, you know, you're passing through the media at an angle. So you're not really going to get caught up um, on the thumb stud. You're not really going to be doing too many push cuts like right here on the knife. So it wasn't really a big deal at all. And when we get to the action, it's pretty good that the thumb studs are right there. Now, jimping is minor, very little bit of it. I wish there was more because it's actually good. And with an aluminum frame that is on the slicker side, let's say, uh, it would be better if you had more of it so that you could really lock in good. But um, it's actually ergonomically, not a bad knife. You know, right now my hands are like a little bit slick and a little bit sweaty and it locks in with me pretty well. I do have like medium to smaller hands though. So your your hands, if they're larger, probably won't fit as well on this and you might struggle a little bit uh, depending on the grip that you want to use. Um, one thing that I do really do like with this is uh, the choking up and sort of doing like pull cuts in this kind of grip. It feels very, very comfortable. So... Yeah, I like it there. And then ergonomically, and we're going to come back to this spot a number of times in this video, but um, this little, the back, I guess it's the pivot cap is what we call it. Um, it actually can provide a good amount of grip depending on how you're going to use the knife. So if you were choking up, like going to do some draw cuts like this and getting your thumb right here on the spot, I mean, that is actually very useful and it's extremely locked in in this position for any kind of detail stuff. So again, if you were utilizing this in the gen's capacity, maybe doing like more kind of fine detail and just like occasional little things, um, that might actually come in handy. Now, as we continue to move on back, we have this aluminum frame and we do have just the one liner for the liner lock. So taking a look up close here, um, there isn't too much to talk about here. There's no real milling on that little inset liner. Um, the aluminum is a little bit on the slick side, like I said, but it's really good looking and I love the color. And like I said earlier about the bead blast, not a fan of bead blast, but the contrast between these two colors is excellent. And that's really what provides the, um, the really uh, great aesthetic look, I think, of this knife. Uh, as we continue to move on back, we do have a backspacer. So it's a small backspacer. And then in this spot right here where you see this transition from the frame to like a, another piece, that's actually where that inset liner is being held on. So it's an interesting way of doing it to give it a little bit more security having it all the way up here. But it also does just provide a... Uh, a visual transition which I don't know if you're looking for something like really classy it does sort of take away from that a little bit but I mean that's a very very minor detail all right and talking about the pocket clip it is a one position tip up only pocket clip so right side uh, it carries really well 
I like it a lot. Uh, Kershaw continues to just find ways to stick their logo like in little slots that you look through <laughs> on a bunch of their knives. Not sure really why they're doing that, but um, but hey, good for them. And I think this is a unique clip to this design, which uh, I do like that they're doing that. Um, could they have drilled holes in the other side for the clip to be swappable? Probably, but I don't know. It might have sort of disrupted just the overall flow of the knife, so um, I'm pretty good with it just being one position. And for me, you know, the way that I carry not going to be an issue. All right, so now let's talk about the action, and then we will talk about lockup and uh, overall fit and finish on this knife. So the action on this knife, this is a manual action on um, Teflon plastic washers. The washers are thick, as you can see right in there. And this thing was pretty stiff opening out of box. So it wasn't the best knife opening, and it's definitely not going to be drop shutty out of box. Have I seen knives on like Teflon washers that can free drop? Sure. But there has to be a little bit of weight to the blade in my experience, you know, and there's like no weight to this at all. So it's just not going to happen. It's smooth. There's not a lot of like, there's no like grit or anything, but it's just not going to be that knife. Opening. Flicking it is really good. There is a good detent on the opening side and then on the closing side. Yeah, so not going to have a problem. Not going to be able to shake it out. If we're slow rolling it, it is going to have that initial pop where you break the detent and it's going to want to go just a little bit further, but slow rolling is pretty good. The lockup. And if the lockup wasn't great, <laughs> you would have heard about it probably in minute one. But the lockup on this is solid. That was my biggest concern because of the, the past issues that I've had. So the liner engages nicely. Um, it is pretty much a full lockup. So like say about that what you will. But I don't see any movement up and down. I don't see any movement left and right. So I am very happy about that. If you look at fit and finish, starting with the centering, and we're going to get into centering and sort of go back to action for a second. So the centering you can see is off. It was not off when I got the knife. So that's a good thing. It was perfectly centered right down the middle, but I did have that like toughness. It was stiff. And so I adjusted the pivot, you know, and, and opened it up a little bit and, and loosened the knife up. And I was able to do that and keep solid lockup, which is excellent, but it did lose the centering just a little bit. So there was a little bit of a compromise, not a big deal for me. I would rather have it a little bit smoother than have it perfectly centered. So I made that decision. But the thing that I really like about that, and, and maybe if you take apart knives, you'll, you'll understand what, what I'm meaning here is that sometimes when you adjust a pivot screw, like there's no room between the start of the adjustment and the beginning of play. Like as soon as you adjust that pivot, like you get play left and right. Here, there is a lot of wiggle room to like to to make that adjustment and, and a big window in order to be able to loosen, you know, loosen the knife and make it smoother without starting to um, have play in it. So that was definitely a good thing. Uh, I really like being able to to tinker with it and and still have that great lockup while improving the action just a little bit. All right, so the rest of the fit and finish of the knife. If there's anything about this knife that isn't great, it's gonna be that. You know, it's gonna be the fact that, you know, well, maybe the fact that it's not on bearings, I'm sure people will have some things to say because maybe it could have been, but the fit and finish just isn't perfect. It's not terrible at all. It's sort of what you'd expect from a uh, a thirty dollar knife, twenty nine ninety five or whatever it is. But it's not perfect. So there are just a couple spots, you know, just from factory that maybe you can see that you know just wasn't finished perfectly. And one oddity that I want to bring to your attention actually up here is that the scales, and I think this is by design. They're not. They're not the same. Do you see that? Like. There's a curvature here and more like a more of an angular kind of finish over here. And I don't know, I, I feel like you can, you can actually see the disparity right here. I feel like that's part of the design. You know, and if you look at the knife in the open position, you know, the scales just really aren't the same size. Is that a huge deal for me? Honestly, 
maybe on a more expensive knife, I'd like sort of raise an eyebrow about it. But here, yeah, not really that big of a deal because in most cases, you're not looking right at that. It's not going to jump out at you and be that big of a thing. And honestly, just the pictures that I've seen of this knife online, I feel like this is a design thing for whatever reason that I can't figure out. I don't know. I mean, maybe they'd made this scale without the liner and then realized the other side needed to be a certain size because they were in setting the liner and just went with it. Who knows? But it is just a little bit different. Um, there is good chamfering and, and no sharpness on any of the edges here. So that's definitely a good thing. But just the edges of the aluminum, they're, they're not flawless. And I don't really expect them to be. So like I said, not too worried about it, but you shouldn't be expecting it to be flawless either. Um, the last little thing about it is this pivot cap. This pivot cap is useful, like I've, I've already talked about, but it also, you know, what it is, is it's just the back side of the pivot. Let me find a knife that has that. So yeah, instead of the back side of the pivot looking like this, you know, it looks like this. And it's cool and it sort of has this like more um, unique kind of look, but the problem is you can see it's just not perfectly flush. And when I was adjusting the pivot, trying to, to get it like to free up and, and break in a little easier, I was also adjusting where this pivot cap was sitting in that hole, you know, because if you adjust it, it might turn a little bit to one side or the other and look a little more flush, but it just isn't going to look perfect. So it is a little bit of a minor blemish. Maybe some of them are coming out looking really great, but you know, from a distance, it can be just a, a little bit I don't know, sort of disruptive to, to the overall great look of the knife. For me, I'm over it already, <laughs> so it's not that huge of a deal. But it is something, again, that if you're looking for this to be like perfectly flush just by design, I don't think it's going to be, and it just isn't executed at that high of a level. So do I wish it was? Absolutely. Is this still a good knife? I say absolutely. $29.95. Um, my expectations were very high. I have a lot of following up to do just in how this knife performs, sure, but also like corrosion resistance and that sort of thing and how it holds up over time. Um, this one, for me at this point, it, it is meeting what my expectation and my hopes were. Um, is it going to be like an all-time great, like the CRKT uh -huh. Ripple? I don't know that it is. I think it's going to be just a really good knife that uh, that Kershaw has put out and maybe down the road we'll get new variations or something else that will like capitalize on it and maybe improve it a little bit more. Um, not a perfect knife, but again, I think in the budget range, if you're looking for a fully usable, super lightweight and extremely elegant, I'll just say elegant <laughs> over and over again, if you're looking for something like that then in this knife, you definitely have it. And yeah, the price for me is agreeable for what you're getting. And the look and design for me carries it past the deficiencies that it does have. All right, guys, any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know down below. I really appreciate you tuning in. I will talk with you soon. Take care and have a good one.